3 o'clock, switch to Match Game on Channel 4. Lightning. Sponsored by delicious mountain grown Folgers. Mountain grown for rich taste and delicious aroma. Oh, what a great old place. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Oh, Pam and I got it for the whole summer. Thanks for helping, Mrs. Oh, you're welcome. And look at this old coffee pot. Oh, we've come a long way in coffee making since then. Mm, but my coffee hasn't. Must be some knack to making good coffee. Oh. Good coffee's no trick. Here, try my Folgers. Oh, coffee's coffee. Oh, no, Folgers is different. It's a special blend. Best I've ever tasted. What's mountain grown? The richest, most aromatic kind of coffee. Nothing is better for coffee than fresh mountain air and sunshine. If you're willing to drink it, I'm willing to make it. Mmm, <laughs> I can almost taste that aroma. Mmm, tastes rich. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. Best pot of coffee I ever made. <laughs> to a great summer. <laughs> Get mountain grown Folgers and make your next pot of coffee your best pot of coffee. expecting anyone tonight. Uh, I'm Emil's grandson, Ted Stein, you know, the new owner. <laughs> well, I own this place. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you made it. We were afraid you wouldn't get here in this storm. Well, look at you, you're soaking wet. Come dry yourself by the fire and I'll make you a cup of hot tea. You must be Dora. Nora. Yeah, the lawyers told me all about you. You used to look after my grandfather. Yes, I did. Oh, he was the one... for him, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. I loved him. I never running. knew my grandfather was alive until I found out he was dead. I'm really going to miss I got to tell you, I was sure surprised when he left me this place. So was I. Hey, this is really terrific. What's that? Oh, uh, better not touch that. Why not? That's your grandfather. Those are his ashes. His ashes? This was his favorite place. <laughs> he made me promise I wouldn't move it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, if it bothers you, I'll put it out. Just say so. It bothers me. Come on, give me a break. I only got two vices in my life. Good cigars and the Boston Celtics. <laughs> I'll get the tea. My grandfather You're was dead. here. I've been waiting for you. We gotta talk. 
Are you sure you're all right? But I'll be a lot better when you and me talked over a few things. Oh, it's you. He got hit by lightning. <laughs> you're always getting hit by lightning. What's the matter with you? I was on the roof fixing the lightning rod. You are a lightning rod. And will you please put out that cigar? You're smelling up the whole house. I'm not the only one who's smoking here. Is she always like that? I ought to attach that lightning rod to her bed. It'd be the biggest charge she ever got. <laughs> what did she tell you about me? Nothing. Uh, you were going to tell me something. Oh, no. Yeah, I got plenty to tell you, but I can't tell you anything till I get back from Salem. What's in Salem? <laughs> Cemetery. <laughs> My great grandfather. I gotta get in his tomb. His tomb? Uh, I know this is none of my business, but why? <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> Someone in here? Oh. I was waiting for you to wake up. <laughs> Didn't want to scare you. Thank you. Very thoughtful. Now, what is it? What do you want? I heard you're selling this place. You're not selling it. Yes, I am. I live in Boston. I'm not moving up here. Now, say what you gotta say and let me get back to sleep. I just got back from Salem, where I got these books out of your great-grandfather's tomb. You don't know who you really are, do you? Sure I do. No, you don't. Okay. Who am I? Say my name and your name together. What? Just say it. All right, uh, Frank Ted. Now can I go back to sleep? My first name and your last name if you have something we're doing it my help. way now just say it all right frank stein so what's that mean nothing that's that's my fault put a put an n in the middle frank n stein faster this is ridiculous say it, just frankenstein say it. there you are what's this all about don't you get in you're a Frankenstein. The Frankenstein family. Oh, come off it. My name is Stein. It is not. It is too. Look, I heard this stuff when I was a kid. It's not true. My father would have told me. Now, would he? Now, would he? It ain't exactly the sort of thing you'd want to spread around the neighborhood, is it? I can't be a Frankenstein. You're the one that looks like Frankenstein. <laughs> Don't you know anything? Your great great grandfather was Dr. Frankenstein. He's the one that made me. I'm the monster. What? I was his monster. Now I'm your monster. Fine. Anything you say. You don't believe me. I believe you, sure, sure. Just what I always wanted. A monster. <laughs> Maybe this will convince you. It's a trick. It's a trick, isn't it? I hate doing this. It's it's so demeaning. <laughs> oh! anything I, about this. I didn't know he was going to sell it. I had no idea he was going to sell the end. I knew this was going to happen to us. Does this mean we're going to have to move, Mom? Oh, I don't know. Well, it makes me sick. I mean, it really makes me sick in the first place. <laughs> He should have left the inn to you. You were the one who built it up. You were the one who brought the tourists Come in. Come on, that's enough. It was enough. your cooking. It was your decorating. Please, Walt, you're killing me. Nora, I feel terrible about this. Then how come your real estate company is selling our house? 
Well, first of all, it isn't your house, is it? <laughs> Nora, I had to take this listing. Is it my fault I'm the top real estate broker in this town? You're the only real estate broker in this town. <laughs> well, I gotta get going. Sure feel terrible about making a bundle on a house that should have been yours. I mean, you did all the work, you did all the cooking, you what? did all the decorating. Don't make your bundle, I'll get over it. After all, I've had other disappointments in my life. You mean Daddy? <laughs> no, your father was not a disappointment. Getting married to him was the disappointment. Nora, all I meant to say is <laughs> Emil should have left the inn to you. That's all I meant to say. You've said it. <laughs> I look just like my great-grandfather. Well, it doesn't say much about him here. What happened to him? No, nothing unusual. He died a natural death. They burned him at the stake. <laughs> That's a natural death? It is if your name's Frankenstein. Are you absolutely sure that I'm a Frankenstein? Well, how much more proof do you need? <laughs> I guess it's true. I'm really a Frankenstein. That's right. You've got a lot of work to do. I know. i got to change my driver's license, my credit cards. Don't ever touch that. <laughs> now, Ted, nobody can know who we are. You mean even Nora doesn't know who we are? Nobody knows. About me, about this lab, about nothing. And with the work we're going to do, it's got to stay that way. Work? What work? Could you make out anything in those old books over there? Yeah, some of them. Now, what kind of work are you talking about? I need a special serum to stay alive. So? Well, I'm glad you're so concerned. <laughs> if I don't get it every 50 years, my cells start degenerating. The, the muscle tissue starts to go. See that eye? It used to look straight ahead like the other one. A few more years, I'll look like a catfish. Oh, take it easy. How can I take it easy? I was created out of a graveyard. I'm 27 different parts trying to make it as one person. And you gotta help me. Okay, we'll do it. Now, where's the formula? Your grandfather ate it. He ate it? Yeah, I tried to get it out of his stomach, but when I reached down there... That's enough! I don't get it. Why did he eat it? Why? Why does a 93-year-old man go skiing naked? His mind was gone. Half the time, he thought I was a chicken. <laughs> but if you don't have the formula, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You're a Frankenstein, and you're a scientist. I'm not a scientist. You're not a scientist? I teach science. I'm a high school teacher. <laughs> you mean my life is in the hands of a high school teacher? Yes, that's all I am. Now, my mind's made up. I'm putting the house up for sale, and I'm leaving tomorrow. You can't leave tomorrow. What do you mean I can't? The Celtics are playing the Knicks Friday night. <laughs> all right. All right. But if you don't stay, I'll die. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Let me put it another way. If you don't stay, you'll die. Don't try to scare me. I'm leaving. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I said, no, you're not. Introducing the Zest Bathtub Test. In this tub, Zest. In this tub, your soap, Eleanor. Watch as we drain the tubs. My soap left a bathtub ring in a film, and Zest didn't. Now let's rinse. I thought I was getting really clean. Sticks on the bathtub are probably stuck on me, too. So we asked her to try Zest at home. I got a lot of lather. I like the lather of the Zest. Zest was very easy to rinse off. You know, it comes off really nice. I just felt good. Try deodorant Zest. Get that cleaner than soap feeling. Hey, cookie lovers. Big Batch is better than ever. Bake someone happy. You and Betty Crocker can bake something.
someone happy. New improved Big Batch. Now with flavor packets. Big Batch cookies so warm, so chewy. With a new flavor packet, Big Batch cookies are better than ever. You and Betty Crocker can. Thanks, Mom. Make someone happy. Kids have the fever, California fever, when every day is sun and fun, and every night is something else. Jimmy McNichol and Mark McClure star in California Fever, new this fall, Tuesdays. Looking good. Listen, Bussy, just pick me up at the airport. I'm not waiting for the bus. I'm getting out of here tonight. Right. The inn is up for sale, but I can handle it all from Boston. Yeah, I'm all right. Now, I'm catching the plane in half an hour, so... You in there, Ted? Gotta go. Ted, I know you're in there. Open up! <laughs> Hi, Frank. The dinner's ready. <laughs> it's like I was saying to Frank. Who needs Boston? The nightlife, the Celtics. I'm bored with it. This is the life for me. Hiking, fishing, dirt, all that stuff. It's great. Never seen anybody change his mind so fast. Yeah. I heard Bill Norris was ready to offer you $100,000 for this place. He was? <laughs> oh, Glenn, why don't you shut up? Idle gossip. Oh, who needs money as long as you're doing what you want to do? Right, Ted? Right. I'm really excited about our working together. What made you change your mind about selling? Oh, a lot of things. <laughs> Actually, one big thing. Uh, I gotta get back to my chores. Want some help, Frank? I got nothing to do. Get your own chores, Glenn. <laughs> what are you always doing out there, anyway? Why don't you go write an article for that newspaper nobody reads and stay out of my business? I don't know why you always have to be... <laughs> I told you to stop doing that. Well, you're always scaring me. And he does it without a mask. <laughs> you know what he did last night? He put a dead crab in my bed. Well, it was a joke. Can't you take a joke? He can't take a joke. There's your mask. What's it supposed to be, anyway? Boy, are you stupid. It's Frankenstein. Oh, Frankenstein, huh? Say, Brian, why don't you come outside with me and help me chop some wood? I got homework to do. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. You can hold the logs. Are you ready to study, Brian? I'll help you with your history lesson. Uh, I finished my history. Then I'll help you with your math. No, you always give me math. Ted, Ted, I have got good news. I have got real good news. Keep your voice down. I found a client who's looking for just this kind of place. He's on his way down from Bangor right now. That's great. Now, I don't want anybody knowing about this yet, not even Nora. Hold it right there, Ted. I promise to sell this house only if Nora stays on and manages it. That's fine with me. Anybody you sell the house to, Nora stays on. You can put it in the escrow. Now, when's your client getting here? A couple hours. Bangor's not that far. <laughs> Brightwater Inn. I got it, Nora. Brian, would you get off? I got it. Hello? Glenn, get off. Hello? Yes? It's for you. Hello? Hi, Don. Where the heck you been? We've been waiting for you. Glenn, I can hear you breathing. Will you hang it up? <laughs> Did you try Twin Oaks Road? You're kidding. What about Highway 14? I don't believe it. Hold on. He can't get here. Two telephone poles fell across Highway 6. The bridge on Twin Oaks Road is split up the middle. Three trees uprooted and fell across Highway 14. That must be some storm. Yeah. There's no storm. Don, listen. I got an idea. Can you get over uh, to Wheeler's Gas Station? Yeah, I know a back road. I'll meet you there in about a half an hour. Good. Get back as soon as I can. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Look 
what I found. Oh, 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 oh great! Oh, oh. I've been looking all over for this. I lost it. You lost I... it outside your bedroom window. I know what you've been up to. And I know what you've been up to. Ah, don't do that! <laughs> What's wrong? I don't like it. Are you afraid of fire? Well, you would be too if you was ever chased by 300 screaming peasants carrying torches. When did that happen? When didn't it happen? My engine's out. Well, maybe you can jump start it. No, I mean it's out. It's gone. It's not in the car. I don't know where my engine is. Really? It looks like somebody just tore it out of the car. Well, excuse me, I gotta get back to my short. You're staying right here, Frank. Call me a tow truck. I'm gonna run down and get Calvin's car. <laughs> what did you do to Calvin's car? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Frank. The bridge, the trees, the telephone poles. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Just like the old days. I'm leaving, Frank. I'm not staying, so get that three ahead. Or whose ever head that is. It's a joke. Can't you take a joke? Nobody can take a joke. Frank? Frank? I'm leaving in a couple of hours, and I just came to say goodbye. Goodbye. What are you doing? What do you care? Did you mix all this together? It'll kill you. What's the difference? Without the serum, I only got a few years to live anyway. Hold it. Hold it just a second. Now, you can't blame me. This isn't my fault. It is your fault. <laughs> You're the last of the Frankensteins. Your people created me. Now you're going to kill me. You are not my responsibility. <laughs> That's the trouble of the world today. Nobody wants to get involved. Well, go on. Go back to Boston. Won't be the first time you Frankensteins have let me down. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Broken promises. Your great-great-grandfather, that idiot Gustav. <laughs> I wanted some companionship. He promised he'd make a woman for me. You kidding? Did he do it? Of course not. He couldn't make a woman. His life depended on it. I didn't know you liked women. A lot of things you don't know about me. Did you know that I haven't had a date in 187 years? <laughs> do you know what that's like? Ooh, I can imagine. I've tried to get along in this world, be nice to everyone. The people won't let me. They used to throw rocks at me on the street. <laughs> take their children in when I walk by. Come on, Frank, that was in the dark ages. You'll be fine. Things are different now. <laughs> oh, are they? Look how they show me in the movies, piling around with that Dracula and Wolfman. Well, it's a lie. <laughs> well, one time. One time I had dinner with a Dracula. <laughs> I had a glass of red wine. He had a glass of the waiter. That's incredible. You really knew Dracula? Dracula was a jerk. <laughs> He'll be a jerk till the day he dies. Which is never. Boy, you sure paint a bleak picture. Uh, you must have had some fun in 300 years. Well, you don't know what it's like being one of a kind. Nobody to talk to, share things with. All alone in the world, ridicule, persecuted. I'm the ultimate minority group. Frank, now stop feeling so sorry for yourself. You got a lot more going for you than most people I know. At least you got something upstairs. Well, I got a raw deal there, too. Will you stop it? You're bright, intelligent. I could have been a lot brighter. You should have seen the brain I almost got. If only that Butterfingers Igor hadn't dropped it. Auf Wiedersehen, mein Creator. Stop it! If you don't stop it, I, I won't stay! What? 
I said, I'm staying. I don't believe it. Oh, goodbye, Celtics. That's wonderful. Goodbye, Nancy. Goodbye, Jamie. You're really staying. Hello, craziness. <laughs> yes, I'm staying, but only until we make the serum. What about a woman? Would you make me a woman? <laughs> Push me, Frank. Well, I was only asking. No harm in asking. You're always doing that. Right, well, since you're going to stay around, we got all the stuff you need. I'm not making you a woman. I can't stay that long. Well, serum's enough. You're right. Serum is more than enough. You will try the serum. If you get off my back, yes, I'll give it a try. Oh, boy, you're a nudge. But you will give it a try. Yes! Oh! Oh! Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'd better make you a woman. <laughs> no. Ever notice there's one house on every block where all the kids play? There's a mom kids can depend on to make days fun. That's a mom who depends on Kool-Aid. At my house, a band of thirsty pirates means one thing. Kool-Aid pre-sweetened. It has vitamin C, saves me money, and kids love the taste. Okay, crew, let's hear it for my mom! Yay! Moms depend on Kool-Aid like kids depend on moms. Kool-Aid brand pre-sweetened soft drink mix. New gravy train? New gravy train? New gravy train? Yeah, you guys will love it. Looks meatier. Darn right. And it's got a richer, thicker gravy, too. No kidding. Look, unlike most dry dog foods, new gravy train makes a thick, rich gravy that makes every meaty taste and bite real juicy and tender. Mmm, richer gravy. Thicker, too. Tastes great. New gravy train dog food with richer, thicker gravy. Next, Susan St. James and Mike Farrell star in a wild comedy about single parents and the trials they face when they re-enter the world of dating. Trust, trust. Can single parents find that new perfect relationship? Yeah, I bet they're touching the teeth. Sex and the Single Parent, the CBS Wednesday movie, coming up next. Help me. 